All right, this is Sully. Welcome back. We're going to be exploring the properties of algebras today. Some of the properties we'd like to talk about are weird goatees. Who would shave their goatee into a pie symbol? Nobody but, excuse me, nobody but Mr. Bean, right? Uh, awkward t-shirts, pie, and they are eating pie. Only these three guys would get together and celebrate pie day by eating pie together. That's the first property of being an algebra, be dorky, which is awesome. Way to go, guys. But actually, we're not going to talk about the properties of algebra. We're going to actually talk about the property of logs today. So we have some interesting things that happen with logarithms. The first thing I'd like you to do is evaluate these. Give me a decimal. All right. Use your calculator. Remember, if you go to the math menu right here, the math menu, you can go to log base and you can put this in exactly like you have it. So pause the video, get some um, decimals here and then match them from A to B and see what you notice. All right, I want you to take a minute and then write down what you notice happens. So first thing, while I was walking around, some of you didn't even pause this video. You just looked at this. It's important that you do this stuff and pause the video and come up with what you see. All right, so let's talk. So I see that these two are the same, all right? And I see there's a four here, a five here. I see the base is the same. It, I made, I had one logarithm, and now I have two using addition. Um, let's see, this one here goes with this one. Over here, I have log base two. I have log base two here. I have 10. Well, 10 is five times two. So that's similar to this. Four times five was four and five. I could have changed this, I guess, to five times two, and then this would be a five and a two. Last but not least, I have log base 10 here, log base 10 here, and again, I have a six, and I have a three. So it looks like there's some connection with logarithms and adding, correct? So we do have a connection between logarithms with multiplication and adding. And who it is, it's our product property of logarithms, okay? So this is one of those things that you're gonna to need to learn, and that's not a big deal. When I have a log, and what I'm taking the log of is being multiplied, I can split that. I can expand that logarithm to two things. And I can make it the log, the same base of M, the first factor, plus log base B of the second factor. Okay, so I'm adding them. And the reason this, remember there's a connection between exponents and logarithms. And the connection here is the same rule. When I have the same base I, and I'm multiplying, I add the exponents. I know not all of you are great at your exponent rules, but that is the connection that you probably need to understand. Okay, so let's take a look here at um, a few things. Let's take a look at a few problems and try some out. So the first one here says, express each as a single logarithm. No problem. So I'm going to go backwards. So I have adding. So I want to go to a single logarithm. So I know that when since I'm adding and they're all the same base, I can put them all in the same log. So log base 3, I keep the base, and I multiply. 4 times m times 2. And in fact, that is going to, we can even simplify that. So that's log 3 of 4 times 2 is 8m. There we have it. Now some of you are probably thinking, you know, why would we need to do this? Why is this ever going to be helpful? Well, let's take a look at the next one. I have the same base here, so log 2, all right? So I'm going to multiply 10 times 12.8, and that gives me 128. So that is it as a single logarithm. Now, why? Why is this helpful? Well, we can evaluate this now. See, we couldn't evaluate this before because there's no power of 2 that's going to help us out. But now I can rewrite this as an exponent. 2 to the y equals 128. And I know 128 is 2 to the 7th power. So now I know that the value of this logarithm is the same here. So the value of that is 7. Now that's powerful. That's going to help us a lot. Okay, let's expand this one. Let's, so now we're going to go backwards. So I have a logarithm. In this case, I have a natural logarithm. I have three factors. So I'm going to expand it. 
So I'm going to take the natural log of the first factor plus the natural log of the second factor plus the natural log of the third factor. And there we have it, expanded out using the product property of logarithm. All right, so what I want you to do is pause the video once again, fill these out, see what decimals you can do, come up with, and see if you can come up with a connection between the two. So if you look, I have 0 0.699, 0 0.431, negative 0 0.606, which is interesting. How did I get a negative, right? And then matching over here. So let's start with 0.69. Okay, so these two match. Let's see, so I have log base 10, I have a 20 and a four. So it looks like division is becoming subtraction, right? Um, this one now is going the other way. I have subtraction, I kept the base. How did eight and four become two? Um, well, 8 divided by 4 is 2, so that makes sense. There's a connection there. And then I have this one, division becomes subtraction. And this kind of explains why this is a negative now. I'm teaching the natural log of a smaller number, subtracting the natural log of a bigger number. When we have smaller numbers being sub and then subtract a bigger number, we get negatives. That's how we get negative numbers. So let's formalize this a little bit. This is going to be called the quotient property of logarithms. In other words, whenever we have a log with a base b, whenever I divide them, I will be subtracting the logs separately, okay? So I have log base b of m minus log base b of n. And how does that connect to our exponent rules? Well, remember, when I have the same base and I'm dividing, I keep the base and I subtract the exponents. So there's our connection right there. All right, so let's take a look here at these problems. Let's get rid of this weird Mr. Kelly. All right, so let's expand this one first and foremost. So I have log base seven, so I need to keep log base seven. The numerator, the top one goes first, so that's log base seven of 80 minus log base seven of 17, okay? Let's go backwards now. We're going to condense it, or uh, we're going to condense it. We're going to express it as a single logarithm. So we have two of them. So I have log base 3. I'm dividing, so this is 27 over 81, correct? All right. Um, I actually know that 27 times 3 is 81, so I can reduce this. So that's log base 3 of 1 third. So there we have our single logarithm, but let's, let's do some more because why is this important? Well, we can, we can actually do this. So three to the Y equals one third. I need the same base. So I have a three down here. So three to the Y. Remember when I change sides, my exponent changes as well from a positive one to a negative one. Now I know that y equals negative 1, so the value of log base 3 of 1 third is negative 1. That's pretty powerful stuff, very, very important. We're going to be able to use that later. Okay, you know the drill by now. I want you to put these in your calculator and evaluate them. One tip, when you do this, make sure you have the exponent inside the parentheses. Don't do log 3 of 4 parentheses to the second, all right? So it's just a, a quirky thing about the calculator. So go ahead. I'm going to pause the video right now, and you can do that. So this is what I got. Um, let's see what we can do. So this one matches here. So let's see what connection. The 2 is out front. Where was the 2 up here? The 2 was the exponent, and when I moved it up front, Everything else stayed the same. All right, um, this one goes here. So now the three is out front, and the three is the X one in here. Interesting. And uh, let's do this one. The four is out front, and the four is... So it looks like there's some connection here between multiplying this whole thing and the exponent that we have. Looks like I can move this right here. And in fact, 
That is what we can do. This is called the power property of logarithms. And what it says is when I have a log base b of, of, of something to an n power, I can move that power to the front and multiply. All right, so I'm going to do n times log b of m. All right, how does this connect to our exponents? Well, remember, a power to a power, I multiply those. Multiplying. So that's how this connects. So you can see and understand better that these logarithms definitely connect to everything we've been doing for the last two units. All right, let's take a look and try some. Oh, we don't want to clone that. That's too scary. All right, so the first one, here we go. I want to expand this. So the first thing, let's rewrite this a little bit. So this is going to be log, looks like base 10. And I'm going to write this as m to the negative third. And the reason I wrote that is I could do this as log of 1, right? But I think it's a little bit easier to do it this way. So we're going to expand this. So now my exponent comes to the front. So this is going to be negative 3 times log of m. Very nice. All right. Now we're going to do it backwards. So in other words, if I have something being multiplied, I can make it my exponent. So my front is going to become my exponent. So this is going to be log 2. Now all of this stuff, all of this is going to have the exponent of 1 half. Sometimes you guys didn't do a very good job of recognizing that that stuff has to be grouped last, last unit. Now what else can I do? Well, 1 half is a square root, right? So let's do log 2 of the square root of 2x. And there you have your condensed logarithm. And that's the power product of logarithms. All right, now <clears throat> we have some uh, properties that are just definition-based. So you have to recall this. This is what um, we've been talking about the last couple of, of sections. We can rewrite log base b of m equals n as b to the n equals m. Okay? And when this happens, there's several things that you'll notice. So, for example, if you put log 2 of 2 in your calculator, you'll get the number 1. All right? And that, that's one thing you're going to have to start looking for. Anytime this happens, it equals 1. All right? Now, let's say I have something like this, log base x of x to the fourth. Well, I could rewrite this because I know my power rule. I can put 4 in the front, 4 times log base x of x, and any time I have my base in the, of what I'm taking the base of match, this equals 1, so this is 4 times 1, so this would equal 4. So that's all this rule is saying. When I have a log of b of what we're, we're talking about to the, the power of m, my answer is just going to be m. I could do it the long way. It's not a problem. So I could do it the long way, but log base 2, 2 of 10 is just going to equal 10. When these match, the exponent's my answer. And we kind of delved into that in the last packet. And last but not least, we talked about the change of base formula. So if I had log of 5 of 6, I could change that to any base I want. Now, most of the time we change this to base 10 because that's the one we can put in our calculator the easiest. All right, so my big, so that goes on top, log base 10 of 6 divided by log base 10 of 5. So that's the change of base formula. That's just one of those things that we need to keep, keep remembering. So, sometimes you work together so long, you just start looking the same. Dean and Bruss have worked together for a while, they look the same. Is that a blue-green shirt or a green-blue? I can't tell. Let's try this one. So, I notice that I have the log base 3 of 3 to the x minus 4. That means this is 1, so my evaluation of that is x minus 4. All right? And then I have 4 times, now I know, anytime the log base 5 of 5, these match, is 1. So this is x minus 4 plus 4, and minus 4 plus 4 is just going to be x. All right? All right, let's do a few more of these. Let's expand this. So the first thing I notice is this is a cube root, so let's make that 
log base 3, this whole thing, to the 1 third. Um, what else can we do? We can split these. So this is going to be log base 4 over the 1 third times r of the 1 third. What's our product property? I can split those into 2, log base 3 of 4 to the 1 third plus log base 3 of r to the 1 third. And last but not least, I can do my product property. So I can move, or my power property, move that to the front. So this is 1 third log base 3 of 4 plus 1 third log base 3 of r. So that is fully expanded. We used a lot of properties there. That's good stuff. Let's do this one. I notice I have the same logs. Here I have the product property I'm adding, and then I'm going to subtract, divide. So I'm going to do log base 4 of 5 times 12 divided by 3.75. So that's the same thing as log base 4 of 60 over 3.75, which is log base 4 of 16. All right, now we can evaluate that. So that's going to be 4 to the y equals 16. I need to rewrite this. So this is 4 to the y equals 4 to the second. So now I know y equals 2. There you have it. Okay. So I would like you to end today here by trying uh, your very own. All right. Do your best on these. Pause the video. Legitimately try them on your own. All right, here we go. So I know this is division, so we use our uh, quotient product, which is, means I can separate them by subtraction. So I have log base 6 of x squared minus log base 6 of 3. I use my power rule, brought it to the front. Voila. Down here, I notice, the first thing I notice is that these 5 and 5, these are the same. That means our answer is the x plus 1. It's our exponent. Now over here, this is kind of tricky because I'm looking for the same base here. If this could be the same base, it saves us a lot of time. Well, I recognize that 4 to the 4th is 256. And then the 4th power to the 2nd power, I multiply, that's 8. Now I had log base 4 of 4 to the 8th. This cancels, so my exponent is 8. Add them up, and I get x plus 9. That's that. Good luck on this section. I know there's a lot in there, but it's very closely related to your exponent rules. Don't forget, be the change you want to see in the world. Peace out.